So welcome everyone to the Fiscal Sponsorship Orientation for New Projects. Uh, my name is Courtney Hart. I'm a program associate here in Fiscal Sponsorship, and I'm here just to walk you through uh, some of the basics of Fiscal Sponsorship with Fractured Atlas, okay? Um, we appreciate you taking the time to attend this webinar, and we really appreciate having proactive members who go out of their way to learn about our programs, policies, and procedures. Um, I'm glad that everyone can hear me. We've checked in about that. If you have questions or if you have any issues throughout the webinar, feel free to uh, type them in the chat box, and I will respond um, as best I can. Like I said, there will be an opportunity for questions at the end of the presentation, but feel free to chat throughout. If it's relevant, I will answer as I go. Otherwise, I'll save it for later. So just to give an idea of our fiscal sponsorship program, in the last 12 months, our fiscally sponsored projects have raised over $19 million. You can see that number at the top in red. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware by now, our fiscal sponsorship program extends some of the benefits of our 501c3 status to artists and arts organizations so that they can solicit tax deductible donations from individuals and institutional funding, which would otherwise be only available to nonprofits. Uh, currently, we have over 3,700 artists and arts organizations who are fiscally sponsored by Fractured Atlas. Um, they are producing one-off discrete projects like a single film or a dance production or sponsoring them for their ongoing artistic activities like a startup theater company or the work in progress of a visual artist. Ultimately, we have the largest fiscal sponsorship program in the nonprofit arts sector. And how many Fractured Atlas staff members administer this program? The answer is seven. That's right. We are able to run the largest arts fiscal sponsorship program in the country with a lean staff of seven individuals. Uh, only a few of us are dedicated full time to the program. Here is our dream team. Obviously, I'm in the center because why wouldn't I be? Uh, right next to me uh, on left going clockwise is Diane DiBasella, our senior uh, program director in charge of fiscal sponsorship. Excuse me, going counterclockwise. Uh, continuing around the circle, we have Teresa Hubbard, our program specialist. Next, we have Amanda Keating, uh, then Nathan Zabidio, and our other program specialist, and uh, Aisha Jordan, our newest program associate. Um, additionally not pictured is uh, Sabrina Cedeno, our membership associate, who is also um, here to support with membership questions, um, as well as basic fiscal sponsorship things. When you give us a call or shoot us an email, you could be working with any one of us at any given time, depending on the nature of your inquiry. To give you a little bit about myself, I'm an independent theater producer and director as well. So I don't just do fiscal sponsorship. I also apply these principles in uh, my own uh, professional uh, artistic life. I've been, I'm originally from the Midwest, and I've been uh, in New York for almost nine years now, working in various artistic capacities. The way we're able to run a program of this size so sm smoothly and efficiently is that we have custom-built online tools that mean a large portion of this program is automated. And there's a great deal of functionality at your fingertips that allows you to control a large portion of your fundraising activities. The purpose of today's presentation is to show you a path forward with our fiscal sponsorship program by giving you a tour of what's available for you on our website and an outline some of the program's policies and procedures. Once our board of directors approves you for the program, you will be able to log into our website and access your My Fiscal Sponsorship page pictured. This is your primary portal for interacting with the program. We're gonna talk through some of the features of this page as well as the program manual. There's no substitute for hands-on learning and we can't possibly cover everything in this presentation. So I encourage you to thoroughly explore this page on our website and read through the program manual. It's not too long. There's your first steps once you're set up with fiscal sponsorship. One of the first things to understand about our fiscal sponsorship program is that it makes a distinction between earned and contributed revenue. Earned revenue is any revenue you receive in exchange for a good or a service. If people are buying tickets to your show, that is earned revenue. If you're selling merchandise or the art itself, that is earned revenue. Contributed revenue is revenue that is received without 
anything in return. Um, so if somebody is giving to you because they support your work, but they aren't getting uh, work in return, they aren't getting services in return, they aren't getting anything in return. And that type of donation uh, defined by donative intent, meaning they are giving it to you with no expectation of anything in return, is what makes it eligible for a tax deduction through fiscal sponsorship. Earned revenue needs to be made payable to you directly. We do not process earned revenue for the purposes of our fiscally sponsored projects. We can only accept contributed revenue. We also cannot process uh, private investments or equity. If you've got for-profit investors involved with your project, we are able to sponsor you, but we do ask for um, a, an addendum to our agreement. Um, it's possible if you've submitted your application already that you've uh, and you've said you're working with for-profit investors that uh, the information has been distributed to you. But if that is something you think you're going to do with your project, you should just email us at support at fracturedatlas.org and we can follow up with whatever information um, may be pertinent to you. Um, either In either case, those private investment funds will not be going through fiscal sponsorship. They will be uh, processed separately. Um, we still only work with contributed revenue, um, but can work with projects that have other revenue sources. We can help you process donations or contributed revenue in three different ways. By debit or credit card, on our website, uh, or a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo or Rocket Hub that has been linked to your fiscal sponsorship. Um, via check made payable to Fractured Atlas, and via non-cash donations of goods made in kind for the charitable purposes of your project. We're gonna go more in depth into each of those. Each of our fiscally sponsored projects has a donation landing page on our website where they can direct donors who want to contribute by debit or credit card. We can accept credit card donations up to $20,000 per transaction. If you have the enviable problem of knowing a donor wants to contribute more than $20,000 and charge it to a credit card, we'll just need to ask them to do so over multiple charges and have them wait about five minutes between transactions so that our system doesn't think it's a duplicate donation made by mistake. Donors who contribute by credit card are required to provide an email address, and we automatically send them a receipt. Please note that you are prohibited from collecting credit card information from your donors and entering it into our website on your own. Donors must input their own debit or credit card information or contact Fractured Atlas to process a donation over the phone. This opens us up to some liability issues as you, the sponsored project, are not authorized to use our credit card processor in this way. Your donation landing page is a public-facing page on our website where you should put content that you want potential donors to see. This can be an image or YouTube video and a brief description of your project or what your current activities are. You can edit your sponsored project's online profile or on our website through your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the Online Profile button, highlighted in this slide. When you submit changes, an automated email will go to a member of our staff asking for review and approval before it goes live on our website. We typically turn this around in one to two business days. We'll either approve the changes outright or be in touch with you directly via email if we have any questions about the new material that you're putting up on your profile. We can also accept check donations that are made payable to Fractured Atlas. You're welcome to have donors write your name or the name of your sponsored project in the memo line, but this isn't entirely necessary because we ask that your donors mail you their contribution first. This is actually a very good question. Uh, someone asked, uh, in regards to donors, do we have access to a list of potential donors to solicit? The answer to that is no. We do not connect projects to donors, either uh, individuals or institutions. Um, it is up to each donor to cultivate their own network, uh, sorry, not each project, to cultivate their own network, to connect with uh, potential interested parties, um, because we don't fundraise on behalf of any of our projects. Um, to, to go on to how do you report check donations. Um, you report them on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the Donations button, highlighted by this arrow. Okay. 
Here's where you'll create the donor record for check contributions. You'll provide the donor's name, contact information, and other information available to you from their check before forwarding it, the check on to us for processing and deposit. You'd be surprised how many unreported checks arrive at our office, which you end up spending a lot of time doing detective work to figure out which of our fiscally sponsored products they are designated for. We often have to mail unreported checks back to the donor or back to you as it's crucial that we receive this information in advance. So to recap, your donors will send you their check contributions first. You will submit donation reports on our website and then forward the checks onto us for processing and deposit. You will be sent an email notification once the donation is processed with a copy of the receipt to forward on to your donor with your thanks. We can accept check donations of any size but those of $1,000 or more require an extra piece of documentation, the major gift letter. I see here's a question about our fees and about acknowledging um, the donations, and I will get to that at the end when we uh, go through a, a few more things and talk about um, acknowledgement. The major gift letter uh, for donations of $1,000 or more is a simple form that's available for you to download from your My Fiscal Sponsorship page that your donor needs to complete and sign. You're able to upload the major gift letter as an attachment to the donation report, but it's not required. Feel free to send us the check to process before you receive the major gift letter if you aren't able to obtain both at the same time. We're happy to process reported checks of $1,000 or more without a major gift letter, but the donated funds will not be made available to you until we are in receipt of a signed and completed letter. As a nonprofit, we need to submit ourselves to an audit, and this is a requirement for our review. Speaking of requirements for our review, there are a few types of monetary donation that we cannot accept, and they are cash. Uh, or money orders. In order for us to be able to issue a tax receipt, we need to be able to directly link money back to a specific individual or entity. A credit card transaction or a check with the donor's bank account and routing numbers on it provides us with exactly that direct link. You're welcome to accept cash or money orders directly for donors who do not want their contribution to be made tax deductible. If, however, they want a tax receipt, instruct them to contribute via debit or credit card on our website or by check made payable to Fractured App. We can, however, help you accept non-cash or in-kind donations. These donations have to be physical, tangible items that exist in the real world and that you can touch with your hands, the ownership of which is fully donated over to your project. Let's unpack that a bit further. We can only process donations of physical, tangible items, so they need to exist in the real world. You need to be able to grab onto them. Donations of a person's time or services are not considered by the IRS to be a charitable tax-deductible donation. So if a restaurant donates food or beverage to you, they can get a receipt for those items. But if they donate their catering services, they could not get a tax receipt that includes that contributed time. We can, however, accept gift cards or gift certificates from businesses that otherwise sell these items. In order to be tax-deductible, non-cash donations need to be fully donated over to, ch to the charitable purposes of the project. Um, so donations of rent or rental items wouldn't count. If someone gives you equipment for free, they would normally charge a rental fee for, or and, and you need to return the items when you're done, that's more of a loan. Similarly, donated space doesn't count as tax deductible as you're only being given partial interest in the property. Finally, we cannot accept donations of donated airfare, air miles, or automobiles. Um, you have a question of, do we handle donations via PayPal or similar services? Um, we directly process online donations, so no, we do not donate, uh, handle donations via PayPal. Um, however, if you do run a connected Indiegogo campaign, those donations can be processed through PayPal. Um, however, there is a higher fee. I apologize, there seems to have been a, a, dis a disruption in the video. Um, can everybody see the video, the, um, the slides?
All right, now can people see the slides? Can't see the slides, okay. So to be clear, the things we cannot accept are donations of donated airfare, air miles, or automobiles. As with check donations, you'll need to report non-cash donations on your My Fiscal Sponsors page. Here you'll also be able to download the non-cash donation letter. This is another simple form letter for the donor to fill out where they provide a description and value of the items that they are contributing. You can upload the non-cash donation letter uh, to the donation report when you submit it through the My Fiscal Sponsorship page. For non-cash donations valued at $250 or more, we require a photograph of the donated item or items. So be sure to take a photograph as soon as you receive the donation, especially if it's donated food or beverage. Um, I would like to note that we do not, when we acknowledge these donations, we do not put the value on that letter. Um, simply because we are not an appraiser, we can't verify the value. It is up to the donor of these goods to have documentation supporting the value of the donation. They will receive a tax receipt that says the exact items that were donated. You know, uh, if this person sent two MacBook computers or um, food and drink valuing at, at this much. Um, however, um, you will uh, not see that dollar amount on the uh, donation acknowledgement letter. Um, with every donation that we process for the purposes of our fiscally sponsored projects, we deduct an administrative fee to cover the costs of running this program. Our administrative fee pays for our staff time, our website, and things like credit card and processing fees. The fee starts at 7%, but as you raise more money, the fee is lowered on check donations. To address a question we received earlier, specifically um, asking if uh, about when our 7% fee can look slightly higher. Um, it can look, uh, somebody said it looks like 7.53%, or that is if somebody donates $100 um, and wishes to cover the fee, if the donor wishes to cover the fee, their charge will actually be $107.53. And that's because our credit card processor is processing the, the full amount, the entire $107.53. And in order for the project to receive $100 directly into their balance, um, we have to charge the slightly higher amount so that the 7% um, is assessed properly. So rather, you're so that the project receives what is 93% of the total donation, um, the charge will look like $107.53. They're acknowledged, they will be acknowledged for the entire amount of the donation. So their tax receipt will show $107.53. Um, you as a project are allowed to send a personal thank you, but the official tax receipt comes from Fractured Atlas. Um, and like we said, that fee starts for credit card donations at 7%, but as you raise more money, the fee is, uh, sorry, the fee is lowered on check donations. So if you raise $150,000 or more over the lifetime of your fiscal sponsorship, the administrative fee on check donations goes down to 6%. At $500,000 or more, it is reduced to 5%. And if you raise $1 million or more, the fee goes down to 4%. We have definitely had products raise at least that much money over their time with us. 
The fee remains at 7% for credit card donations as the processing fees that we incur do not change. We also charge a 7% fee on the stated value of this donated non-cash items. You can either have us charge this fee to your credit card on file or have us deduct it from your available fund balance. You can always check your available fund balance on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, shown here. But maybe we're going a, too, a bit too fast and to take a step back. Um, before we even start processing donations, how do we get people to consider making a contribution? Simply, we ask. And this is often the first hurdle that budding arts entrepreneurs encounter. Every day I talk to artists or art startups who experience an initial discomfort about actually asking people for money. I encourage our fiscally sponsored projects to consider themselves in good company. All nonprofit artistic ventures, uh, and even some for-profit ones in the United States, require this type of support to keep in operation. That goes for the Metropolitan Opera in New York or the Getty Museum in L.A. Don't consider it panhandling or begging. Consider it an offer. You're offering potential patrons an opportunity to get involved with something bigger than themselves. And with fiscal sponsorship, you're offering them tax deductibility to boot. As soon as you're approved for fiscal sponsorship, we recommend that you send out an appeal asking for people to make a contribution and to let them know that their donation will now be tax deductible. Um, some other ideas include an email blast, a snail mail campaign, a newsletter, put it on your website, host an event. You could even run a crowdfunding campaign. All of these are things you consider at some point as part of your larger fundraising strategy. We have an individual appeal letter template, among other fundraising templates, available for you to look at on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. Crafting a good letter is more than just plugging your info into a formula and pressing send. So I would strongly encourage you to use this template as a way to kickstart your brainstorming uh, about the letter that you intend to send out. But before you intend, before you send out your appeal to potential donors, please send Fractured Atlas a copy first for our review and approval. You can email your fundraising material, materials to support at fracturedatlas.org. A good rule of thumb is that anytime you mention Fractured Atlas or promise tax deductibility or mention fiscal sponsorship, you should run it by us. We require that you do this for a few reasons. First off, um, it's in your best interest to have another experienced pair of eyes take a look at what you're about to send out. At this point, I've reviewed probably hundreds of donor solicitations at least, and we have a pretty good idea of what a successful, well-presented letter looks like. We can offer you some tips and tools to potentially maximize the effectiveness of your fundraising materials, so we'll definitely provide feedback where appropriate. We're also looking to see what you're correctly representing the fiscal sponsorship arrangement. Um, we have a question. It says, uh, can the appeal letter be downloaded? Uh, yes. Once you log in to My Fiscal Sponsorship, uh, you should be able to access a template that you can, that you can uh, use and, and edit as you need. Um, somebody's just offering the helpful hint that printed signed letters get people's attention. That is fine. You are welcome to do that as long as you send uh, us a digital copy of that letter for review before you send it out. To that end, we've crafted some standard text that we require you to include with your donor solicitation materials. This can be found in the program manual. It's a quick two-sentence paragraph that succinctly summarizes the fiscal sponsorship arrangement. You're welcome to include it as fine print at the bottom of materials, but it must be in there somewhere. Also note that there are different versions, uh, there are three different versions of the standard text for use in different cases. Um, so be sure to know which one um, you're using at any given point. We're also looking to see what you're offering donors in exchange for the contribution. Um, for example, advertising space is a prohibited activity via fiscal sponsorship. Um, you can't offer a tax donation for advertising. Um, and it can be a, a bit tricky to see what is advertising and what is um, 
just showing support of your donors. Uh, there is some information about this in the program manual, but a good rule of thumb is if you are in control of the content, logo placement, size, what they're saying, if that is you, the project, uh, in control, then it is considered a sponsorship or it, it's not an, an endorsement of their project, it's just a recognition. If the donor is in control of the content, so they say it has to be on this page, it needs to be this size, it needs to be this color, it needs to be, I, it can't be with this other uh, donor. Um, all of that is advertising. Um, and that uh, you are welcome to offer, but you cannot offer uh, in exchange for a tax deduction. Don't, uh, advertising has to be separate from your uh, fiscally sponsored funds. Other things we might be looking for, are you trying to run a raffle? Um, something that may be a good idea, but it is prohibited from running it through uh, fiscal sponsorship as well. Um, it's a form of gambling that's generally uh, monitored by the state or by a local gaming commissions. Um, so you can't award donors raffle tickets in exchange for tax deductible donations. Um, there are a few other prohibited activities. Um, somebody's asking about auctions, um, and we just need to talk case by case uh, because we need to know what you're giving, what the value is, and how that works. Um, so the, the best thing to do if you're looking to run an auction um, is to email us or give us a call and we can work through how that is possible. Whenever you offer your donors rewards of goods or services in exchange for their contribution, something like an auction um, or just perks in exchange for their gift, um, this makes their donation partially deductible above and beyond the fair market value of the rewards they're receiving. So let's say you're offering, um, for a $50 donation, you're offering a $20 ticket to your show. Um, that means that donation is only tax deductible above and beyond the $20 ticket value. Um, if you, let's say you're offering a donation, um, let's say you're offering a donation to, uh, sorry, somebody's giving you a donation uh, and you're giving them like a coffee mug or uh, some branded merchandise in exchange, uh, you can then, you just have to have a donation that is greater than the value of the items because if it's the same value of the items then it's a sale and that is not tax deductible um, and the donation is only tax deductible for the amount greater than the value of the mug or the t-shirt or the whatever you're offering um, i see there's some additional conversations uh, around what is tax deductible and, and what these types of partially donation deductible donations are about. And I'm going to save those for the end um, so we could get into more specifics, okay? Um, but we do need our donations to be at least partially tax deductible. So you wouldn't be able to offer donors rewards of equal or greater value to the amount that they are contributing. Um, such an exchange no longer becomes contributed revenue, it's a purchase, like I said, um, or earned revenue and not processed through fiscal sponsorship. Uh, one place where partial deductibility often comes into play is with crowdfunding campaigns. Um, we partner with the platforms uh, Indiegogo and Rocket Hub so that you can create campaigns on either of these sites that are linked back to your fiscal sponsorship with us. That way we're able to process the donations made to your campaign and uh, issue donors tax receipts. In the year 2016, it's likely that you've heard of crowdfunding and supported campaigns yourself, so you know what it is. We encourage our projects to run a campaign at least once as part of their overall fundraising strategy. Crowdfunding is a great tool to raise both funds and awareness about your work. You set a deadline and fundraising goal and often offer different giving levels where you incentivize donations by rewarding donors for their contributions. Uh, these perks are often partially deductible, so we'll be looking for you to provide info related to the fair market value of what you offer your donors in exchange for these donations. Before your campaign launches, you want to look 
will want to take a look first to provide feedback and make sure your giving levels take into account potential partial deductibility. We ask for about five business days uh, to review your campaigns, um, and we don't launch campaigns outside of our operating hours. So we don't launch campaigns on weekends. We don't launch campaigns in the evening. Um, so it is important to plan on that when you're looking to launch. This is a very good question. Um, so if I've already raised a little bit of money through Fractured Atlas um, and then decide to run a crowdfunding campaign, will that money show up on the Rocket Hub or Indiegogo campaign? And the answer is it will not. Uh, only funds raised through that campaign while it's active will show up on the campaign. For both platforms, you're welcome to have updates or to show that we have raised these funds outside of this venue, uh, but you would not be able to um, basically import old donations um, into your uh, active campaigns. Uh, next relevant question is, uh, do crowdfunding campaigns or do our partnerships involve additional fees, particularly if you don't meet the designated goal? Um, neither of the campaigns, if they are connected through us, so either through Indiegogo or Rocket Hub, um, have additional fees for not meeting the goal. Indiegogo, does um, have a slightly higher fee. It's a total fee of 10%. That includes our fee, that includes their fee, and that includes a PayPal fee uh, through Indiegogo. So uh, funds raised through Indiegogo are 10%, and that is regardless of whether or not you make your goal. Funds raised through Rocket Hub uh, remain at 7%. That includes the Rocket Hub fee, that includes the Fractured Atlas fee. Um, so there's no additional fees above and beyond um, our standard administrative fee uh, for Rocket Hub and no additional fees on either platform if you don't make your goal. They're all keep what you raise platforms through our partnerships. To get started crowdfunding, head to your My Fiscal Sponsorship page and click on the Accessorize button. Occasionally, um, there can be uh, technical issues between the Indiegogo or Rocket Hub connections. So if you encounter a technical error, just check in with us at support at fracturedatlas.org. Also, if you don't hear from us uh, within a, a day or two around launching your campaign or starting your campaign, uh, feel free to reach out to us as well. And we can make sure that it's linked and that everything is processed correctly uh, before your campaign goes live. Alternatively, if you don't want to run a crowdfunding campaign or if you want to offer giving levels to donors on an ongoing basis, you can add some to your donation landing page on our website. From, from the My Fiscal Sponsorship page, click Donations and then add Giving Levels. Your donors will then present, will be presented with options on our website for different giving levels that they can contribute at. And if you want to offer donors rewards, their online debit or credit card con donation can be partially deductible. So if this is something that you're looking to offer on an ongoing basis, this is uh, a time that that can happen. Applying for grants. Um, Fiscal sponsorship can open the door to institutional funding, uh, like for foundation, from foundations or corporations. Um, as with approvals of your individual solicitations and crowdfunding campaigns, we want to be involved when you apply for grants from these sources. Um, this is a slightly more involved process. Um, before you start looking at grants, however, you should be aware of our grant eligibility requirement. This means uh, we've been told by many funders that they don't wish to see applications before a project has raised $1,000 in contributed income. So we need to see proof of that. Um, either links to previous fundraising campaigns or previous award letters or even letters from your donors saying that they have supported your campaigns or projects to the tune of $1,000. Without that, you are not eligible to apply for grants, grants through us, um, and so we will not approve your grant applications. Speaking of approving grant applications, we are, we require all of our projects to submit every grant application that they would like to submit for review. They That has to go through us. We ask for 10 business days before a deadline to review a grant. Um, for some of our 
larger grants um, that sometimes can be uh, longer. But that's because we are the legal applicant. Technically, we're the applicant of record. So we need to make sure that uh, you are submitting grants for activities that are covered under fiscal sponsorship, that you are eligible for this grant, and that you are uh, making the best possible case for support for your um, project. Um, while we are the applicant of record, uh, it is still your responsibility to complete the application, gather uh, whatever necessary, materi necessary materials you may need, um, read and be aware of any contracts, any uh, reporting requirements, um, all of that uh, we will definitely assist you in, but it is something that you will be required to do. I see we have a question about uh, giving levels. Um, the question is, were giving levels and or perks mandatory? They are not. They are merely an option, um, but you do not have to do them. Uh, this question is uh, about, uh, are we acting as a clearinghouse for grants uh, because receiving, okay, of, because the project received 501c3 status via Fractured Atlas? And that is not correct. Um, Fractured Atlas does not grant any project or entity tax exempt status. Fractured Atlas is allowing projects or organizations to use some of the benefits of our federally tax exempt status uh, in support of applying for grants. That's why we are the applicant of record. We are applying to these different organizations on your behalf. Each application is different. That's why we have to review every grant that goes up. We have to review um, uh, everything that's kind of submitted with our name on it to make sure that the the rep, the relationship is presented correctly to make sure that um, the application is is processed correctly and that and that kind of all of the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Um, This is a question about the grant eligibility requirement. Um, so yes, if a project has raised $1,000 prior to being in fiscal sponsorship, um, then you can be eligible for grants. We just need to see proof of that. So send us a letter that says you've been awarded these funds or send us a link to a previous fundraising campaign where you raised $1,000. It is, you, It doesn't have to be money that comes through us. It does have to be contributed income, so either donations or grants. Um, and, but we do have to, we just need to see documentation. Um, I believe there is a, so this is a question about, to go back, the major gift letter process. And this is covered uh, in great detail in the program manual. So I would strongly suggest just reviewing the program manual around major gift letters, but they are still acknowledged. We, Fractured Atlas uh, offers the formal tax acknowledgement to all donations. Um, so you can, uh, we just need a major gift letter uh, to process them. So feel free to review that directly in the program manual. Um, somebody asks uh, for the $1,000 grant eligibility requirement, is it at any time previous? We ideally like to see things that happened within the past two or three years or that were associated with this project. So um, if you, raised funds for the same project, but it, it might be slightly longer than you can send that material. Um, or if you've raised funds for yourself, your individual arts practice, or for your um, for another project briefly, but it's, it's more recent, then you can send that as well. Uh, we also review these on a case-by-case -case basis. So send us what you have, and we can talk more specifically about if it is enough information uh, for us as our funders uh, need. Um, is there a grantor list through Fractured Atlas uh, that you can get? Um, we do offer a grants toolkit. It does have um, some funders that uh, support different types of projects. It's not um, a list uh, that guarantees eligibility. It's not um, a list of funders that you have to apply for. It's just a place to start your research and uh, walks you through the uh, granting process. Um, it has some very helpful hit tips. The way to get that toolkit is to email support at, fractures, at fracturedatlas.org, sorry, support at fracturedatlas.org and request the grants toolkit. To be eligible for the toolkit, you 
you still also have to have the pass the thousand dollar grant eligibility requirement um, because we only we offer that toolkit to our projects that are eligible to apply for grants through us. So um, email and see uh, if that's a possibility, but we, we do offer that. Um, this question, if the grant does not require 501c3 fiscal sponsorship, does it need to go through Fractured Atlas? The answer is no. Um, however, there are some grants that say that you can apply with a fiscal sponsor or you can apply as an individual. Um, if you apply as an individual or if you apply without the 501c3, then you need to make sure you do not mention Fractured Atlas, fiscal sponsorship, or tax deductibility. Basically, if you're going to apply on your own, you have to make sure that you do not mention us. Um, if you are going to apply to that opportunity and you want the funds to be processed through fiscal sponsorship, it has to go through our standard uh, review process, and it, it processes just like any other grant. Um, so what you can't do is not submit it for review and use Fractured Atlas as your fiscal sponsorship fiscal sponsor anyway. Um, question is, do you need to submit an e-blast for approval before sending it out? Yes, we do need to see that, particularly if you mentioned Fractured Atlas, fiscal sponsorship, or tax deductibility. Um, if there is a requirement on a specific grant that the applicant be based in a specific city and that is not where Fractured Atlas is located, does that mean I can't apply? That is a very good question. Um, and the answer is it depends on the funder. What you would do in that case is reach out to the funder directly, either via email or phone call, and let them know or ask them if uh, you would be eligible. There are some government funders where they will not receive, uh, particularly if the government entity, state, local entity is not, uh, or we are not there, sometimes uh, they will not accept, allow us to accept the funds. Sometimes they will. It really is case by case. Um, that is, again, something you would have to uh, address with that particular funder. Um, as I said at the beginning of this uh, webinar, we are the largest arts fiscal sp sponsor in the country. Um, so Many funders know who we are and have worked with us before. So it, it's entirely possible, but you would have to check with them. I believe, yes. So I believe those are all of the questions up to this point. Uh, this is a, a question is, do we recommend any entity with which to find grantors? So how can you find funders? Uh, you can connect with the Foundation Center. They have an excellent website and they actually have uh, actual physical libraries in various cities across the U.S. Um, and they are a list of all of the public, uh, sorry, the private foundations uh, and public charities in uh, the U.S. Uh, and so they are a resource to find uh, funders. Alrighty. Thank you all for your questions, for being very engaged. So we are moving on to, once you've solicited donations, you've had people donated to donate to your projects, how do you access these donated funds? Well, first, you'll need to send us the information for your checking account, which you can do by downloading the sign-up form for electronic funds transfer, or EFT, from your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. It's right there under the Fund Releases button. We strongly recommend that you have an account for your project's finances that is separate from your personal finances. This doesn't need to be a business bank account. It can just be a separate personal checking account. Here's what our EFT form looks like. It's pretty simple to complete. You can send us the completed form with a voided check in one of three ways. Scan and email it to us uh, at support at fracturedatlas.org. Fax it to 212-277-8025. That number is uh, on the form. Or you can snail mail it to us. All of our contact information is also available on our website. Uh, we need a, a voided check or um, any other acceptable form of documentation that shows the account or routing number from the bank. Uh, we can't just, we can't take starter checks, we can't take checks without a, a contact uh, address because we need to verify that the bank has accurate contact information for you. Um, and we need to make, verif we need to have information that verifies that this uh, account, that you were authorized to ask for funds for this account. Um, if you have any other questions about this, feel free to email us or give us a call. Once we received your checking account information, you'll be able to submit a fund release request through our website for any funds that are available in your fund balance. We hold all donations for seven calendar days after we process them. 
Um, so not business days, just seven days. To make sure that the check doesn't bounce or the credit card charge isn't disputed. After seven days, donated funds are available for you to request unless we're waiting on a major gift letter for a check donation of $1,000 or more. We're happy to hold on to donated funds as long as you need us to, provided that you remain a dues-paying member of Fractured Atlas with an active fiscally sponsored project. Um, and then you can release them to you when you have project-related expenses. We do not automatically transfer funds to our projects. As a fiscal sponsor, we need to demonstrate that we maintain a certain degree of discretion and control over how funds raised through our program are used. The fund releases uh, it through this process um, is a control we have in place to make sure that fiscally sponsored projects are using funds in alignment with our charitable miss mission and their approved activities. When you submit a fund release request, you'll let us know how much you need and how you'll be spending the money using some pretty broad expense category budget line items. So you can say that $1,000 is for public relations or $500 is for space rental. There is an other expense category, but here's a helpful hint. We almost never let anyone use other as an explanation for their expenses. Almost 100% of the time, your expenses will fit into one of the categories provided. One thing that you're not allowed to do is regrant funds raised through our program to another individual or entity with no strings attached. The best use of fiscal sponsorship is to raise money to create an expenditure to money to create and spend on expenditures related to the art that you're making or the service you're providing. And this includes paying people a salary or stipend for their time, but you're not able to award grants to fiscal sponsorship funds for other entities. Here is a question. The question is, how do you link a donor to, to Fractured Atlas via an email blast and or website? Um, uh, previously, I showed the profile page. That is where the donation button uh, resides. So you would give them a link uh, to either to your profile page or um, to a donate page on your website, which we would also have to approve that links to the profile page uh, and the donation button. For particularly large fund release requests, uh, we require documentation. What documentation means is receipts, contracts, invoices, purchase orders. We need to see that uh, basically everybody is in agreement about what these funds are going to be spent for. We reserve the right to ask for documentation for any fund release request. Um, so we, we may ask you for a $5 fund release request. We may ask for documentation, um, but we require it for anything that is $5,000 or more. Uh, so that is uh, something to be aware of. You are also required to have the documentation, even if we aren't requesting it. It is something that should you be audited, should Fractured Atlas be audited. We want to make sure that is present and available for you. Um, When you apply for fiscal sponsorship, if you recall, you were asked to provide a legal entity with the U.S. taxpayer ID. This is either an individual with their social security number or a business with its employer identification number, or EIN. We can work with any type of legal entity, individual, sole proprietor, for the proprietor, limited liability corporation, corporation, anything like that. We ask for this. Uh, because funds dispersed through our fiscal sponsorship program are reported as income to that legal entity in the form of a grant. This is a good question. Um, is a fee for the artist uh, yourself or artist you pay for a fund release category? The answer is yes. Uh, we do have uh, and the ability to through the fund release requests, either uh, document wages and salaries or your independent contract uh, fees. Each January, we issue 1099s to individuals, partnerships, and LLCs showing funds dispersed in the previous calendar year um, as box three or other grant income to file with their tax documents. Corporations are not issued 1099s, but they will still need to report fractured atlas income on their own taxes. Uh, that said, you should not necessarily have to pay income tax on fractured atlas fund releases. 
Because we only release funds to you when you request them for use on your specific project-related expenses, you should be able to offset the income on your taxes using the expenses that the funds pay for. We strongly recommend that you use an accountant to file and keep careful documentation of your expenditures. An important thing to keep in mind is that your project is a separate business entity from Fractured Atlas. One of the great aspects of this is that you maintain complete ownership over the work that you create. But we do not grant you 501c3 status, as I previously stated. Only the IRS can do that. Rather, we are extending some of the benefits of our nonprofit status to the projects and organizations that we sponsor. To that extent, we'll want you to check in with us on a few things, primarily the use of our tax identifier. I'm sure if a friend of yours asked for your social security number, you would be curious about why. In the same way, anytime you encounter a situation that requires our EIN, please let us know so that we can advise on its usage. We're happy to provide sponsorship confirmation letters. Uh, we're happy to provide confirmation letters address specific potential donors. There we go. Sorry. So we're happy to provide sponsorship confirmation letters to address specific potential donors or sponsors to help grease the wheels, but we cannot provide a one-size-fits-all confirmation document with our EIN as we want to be involved each and every time someone is requesting our info. Just email us at support at fracturedatlas.org. We're not able to help you set up your own bank account using our EIN. Any account that you create needs to be set up in your own name with your own tax ID. So don't sign up for anything that requires our tax identifier without running it by us first. We can also provide a letter to help you obtain nonprofit rates from vendors that offer them. It's ultimately up to the vendor if they will extend the rate, but most are willing to do so. This is especially helpful with space rentals. If the venue offers a nonprofit rate, we can usually help you get a discount. Again, just shoot us an email and we'll send you a letter. Nonprofit rates do not apply to bulk postage for your mailings. This is something that you would only have access to if you had your own uh, 501c3 status. We're also not able to help you with sales tax exemption uh, because it isn't transferable to our out-of-state projects. It actually only works in New York State. And because we would have to be the legal recipient of whatever items are being purchased with the nonprofit status. Um, so as a result, we do not offer sales tax exemption to any of our projects. The finer major fiscal sponsorship policy to bring to your attention is our annual report. For any fiscal sponsored project that either processed donations or requested fund releases in a given calendar year, we are going to require that you submit to us an annual report updating us on your activities. The report is due on April 1st, and we will send out three reminders starting at the beginning of the year. If you don't complete the report by April 1st, we will freeze your project. But it's relatively simple to unfreeze your fiscal sponsorship. You just need to submit the report. You can access your annual report on the My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the Info Reports button. This report is entirely online, so you don't need to prepare a different document and has two major components. The first is that we ask you to provide a brief narrative description of what you accomplished the previous calendar year. This can be as detailed as you'd like, although we would prefer that you keep it relatively brief so it doesn't take us too long to review. With the narrative, you provide a numerical impact for your work to show how many people were exposed to your work and how many artists participated. We also ask for updated financials. Because we only process contributed revenue for your fiscally sponsored project, we are only aware of income and expenditures relating to the funds that we've handled. So here's an opportunity to tell us about other funds spent, um, where they came from and how they were spent. Also, if you changed how funds released through our program were spent, like if you said that $1,000 was going to be used for transportation, but you ended up spending it on utilities, here's your chance to let us know that we can better adjust our own books. The annual report is another important way that we demonstrate the discretion and control over how funds raised through our program are used. But this is also a way for us to collect data about the artists and arts organizations that we serve so that we can better understand our own impact in the nonprofit arts sector in the United States. The more accurately you can provide your data, the more complete is our picture for the kind of business our sponsored products are able to do in their own communities. I'm going to open up for questions momentarily, but I hope you've gotten a sense of how our fiscal sponsorship program is easy to use and how much power you have at your fingertips through the online tools available on our website. I would encourage you to once again to thoroughly explore your My Fiscal Sponsorship page and the program manual for a more comprehensive overview of all of our program policies and procedures. Before we open up for questions, I'd just like to quickly plug Fractured Atlas's other programs and services. 
First is Artfully. Um, this is a ticketing and customer relationship management software. It can connect to your fiscal sponsorship. So um, it does allow for a donation widget uh, that you can put on your own website um, once they are connected. But it connects to MailChimp. It is an excellent way to manage your donors, manage your ticket buyers, and uh, all of your uh, constituency. Space Finder. Um, this is uh, an opportunity to connect your project with venues, either rehearsal space, performance space, um, or if you have a space and you would like to connect to other patrons, this is um, a, a great way to do that as well. Um, it has customizable search. It has venues with sync calendars, venues that let you pay through their listings. Um, and it is available in several cities throughout the country and um, some in Canada. And lastly, our insurance program. You know, insurance is just a necessity for any artist operating um, in today's world. We have uh, insurance for Burning Man. We have insurance for fire artists. We have insurance for um, organizations that need directors and officers insurance. There is a variety of different types of arts insurance that is available uh, to help you support your business um, and support your arts practice. And so now we are open up for questions. Uh, I'm happy to answer whatever you may need, so feel free to add them in the chat box. Um, and uh, thank you all for your time and for participating in a, a great webinar. Uh, so the first question is, how should we use the Fractured Atlas logo? Um, again, that depends. You aren't required to use the logo. You will be required to enter the standard text, which I spoke of earlier, but we would, we would prefer that materials that are going out to your donors look like they come from you, not from Fractured Atlas. We are not soliciting donors on your behalf. We are not connecting you to donors. So we would prefer that you don't try to make like Fractured Atlas letterhead or anything that presents that you are submitting materials from Fractured Atlas. Um, if there are things that you need, like sponsors of letters or things like that from Fractured Atlas, we are happy to provide those on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, our logo should be used to supplement your information. It should not, uh, again, look like things are coming from us. Uh, the question, do the online profiles support HTML, uh, HTML tags? And the answer is no, they do not. They're very simple uh, image, text, our donation button. Um, people frequently use their own websites um, and either put the artfully widget or put a link directly to the the payment portion of the Fractured Atlas site if they would like more uh, complicated or more complex uh, donor uh, pages. Uh, but that uh, each of our standard profiles um, are just that they're they're standard and 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 fairly basic used differently for different people. Question is, uh, so raising money through ad sales for a program is earned income? Yes, um, and would not need to go through Fractured Atlas. That is correct. Would not be able to go through Fractured Atlas. That's correct, but would need to be disclosed. Uh, yes, we would like to know about that income during the annual report, but uh, that income would not be processed through Fractured Atlas outside of that. Um, if the website is run by someone other than the project, is there a way to make sure the donor link is secure? Um, the link is, uh, I mean, our, our donation link is encrypted. It is a secure link. So you can either use the Artfully widget, which uh, runs through our credit card processor um, and, and processes directly through us. So it goes through our standard security. Um, or you can just make a link to our page and have them donate through the page. Um, if there's a specific way you would like to, uh, there, there is no way anybody outside of Fractured Atlas would be receiving the donor information. Um, it comes directly to us, um, even through uh, Indiegogo and Rocket Hub. So um, I'm happy to, via email, discuss this with you further if there are specific things on your page you would like to talk about. But uh, ultimately, the link is secure. Can the project site be standalone without all the information about Fractured Atlas terms or fees, et cetera? The answer is probably no, um, but we would have to see specifically what your site looked like. 
if you are soliciting donations, if you are using Fractured Atlas as your fiscal sponsor, if the donations, if, if people are, are donating or contributing to your project through our link, then we have some standard text. We have information that needs to, to be uh, included. So um, there is no way to, to process donations through us without mentioning us or without having um, our information um, included in the site. Um, can individuals or teams create their own page in support of, in support of the project or compete to raise funds? Uh, we cannot. That's a, a kind of, uh, you know, like walkathon or pledge-based model where, or, or, or something where there are individuals kind of all competing to go forward a different project. And that is not something we currently support. Uh, we don't have a... If we don't have a partnership with, with any type of site to do that, partially because uh, with fiscal sponsorship, the way the funds travel, basically the number of hands that touch the funds is very important. Uh, so we try to limit that as much as possible. That's why with our current partnerships, we actually process the funds directly first. Um, and we uh, don't have any other partnerships that would allow for basically creating separate kind of splinter sites that all then ultimately come through a different project uh, because that's just too many hands and the money traveling through too many places. Um, there's a question about the Artfully widget, um, and that just means if you signed up through Artfully, there is an, an option to connect it to your fiscal sponsorship. The best way to figure that out is to go to our knowledge base. Uh, it's on fracturedatlas.org under the Help tab, um, and then it can walk you through what Artfully is, how the widget can support uh, your fiscal sponsorship, um, and you can get specific answers, answers there. The question is, how do we show you what our website will be before we launch it? That is a good question. Uh, frequently, what people do is they send screenshots of, of their private website, or you can send us to a link to a link to the password protected website before it's live. Um, you can send us the copy that will show on your website. But once it is live, we still do have to see it and we still uh, do have to uh, be able to make uh, changes. Uh, so we, we may suggest changes at that point. But if you you basically have to either show us mock-ups so we can approve it, and then once it's live, we can kind of approve it again, or um, you can, again, send us to a private version of the site. Um, I believe previously somebody had uh, a few different questions, so I want to go through those. Um, the first question is, if a car dealership, this is about non-cash donations, if a car dealership donates vans for a production to use during the shoot and return at the end, is that not tax deductible? You are correct. That is not tax deductible. They are not donating the cars. They are um, loaning you the cars. Sometimes that company, the company who has the cars can write that off as a business loss, but that is not tax deductible. And even if they were giving you the cars, we do not process automobile donations through fiscal sponsorship. So none of that is tax deductible. A follow-up question. If a restaurant donates breakfast for the cast or crew for one week, will that not be tax deductible? That can be tax deductible. The food and drink, that's those are tangible items. Uh, so the value of the food or drink uh, can be considered tax deductible. It just, it wouldn't be the service. So you couldn't get catering services where the waiter, wait staff is included, but the actual food or drink given uh, can be tax deductible. Uh, the question is, if we launch an Indiegogo campaign, how do you link the donations to Fractured Atlas? Um, you won't still have to pay the Indiegogo fees. Again, as I, as I mentioned, uh, you would have to launch it through the My Fiscal Sponsorship page. There's an accessories link with instructions on connecting an Indiegogo campaign to your fiscal sponsorship. Um, and it, it should be linked that way. If you are already running an Indiegogo campaign or if you launch it without going through our process, we cannot connect it retroactively. So it's in your best interest to follow those steps or to reach out to us while you're thinking about uh, starting an Indiegogo campaign and making sure that it is connected properly. Otherwise, those funds will not be tax deductible. They will not go through fiscal sponsorship. Uh, the question is, can you use a different crowdfunding platform like CrowdRise or something else? You're welcome to to host a crowdfunding campaign outside of our partnerships. However, those funds will not be considered to be tax deductible. They will not be processed through fiscal sponsorship. We will not accept them. So you can't like go to CrowdRise and then send those funds through fiscal sponsorship. Um, that's not how that works. Um, and could we have a private dinner for potential donors and ask for donations that way? Uh, you could. We would, we probably do best to talk more specifically about that 
type of event and how it goes, but that is um, that is possible. We just there are some things we would need to make sure of, um, and uh, we can talk more specifically about your specific event uh, either via email or phone. Um, can donations be made to support housing costs for guests, artists, or out-of-town participants in the program? Yes. Paying your artists, offering them a stipend, offering to house your artists, those are, particularly if they are traveling, um, those can be project-related expenses. Uh, so uh, that, that is definitely uh, possible. All right. I believe I have covered all of our questions at this point. Um, Again, if you have additional questions, feel free to follow up via support at fracturedatlas.org. Uh, we're happy to answer via email. I'm also uh, going to send a video of this campaign, uh, sorry, of this uh, webinar to you um, so that you can review um, those questions. And almost everything is available also in our program manual. So we are happy to answer questions. We are happy to um, offer whatever you may need. Um, we also, every Tuesday night, offer different webinars in this series uh, just to help you manage your fiscal sponsorship program. Here is a list of our webinars, and they're also all available uh, uh, on our website so you can see what our upcoming schedule is. Um, uh, we really are, you know, want to make sure that you guys are successful. Um, so thank you for taking the time to attend tonight's presentations. If you've done our job right, you should have a more clear picture of how to use our fiscal sponsorship program to its best extent. Again, feel free to reach us, reach out to us if you have any other questions and enjoy your evening. Thank you all so much.